This is African American History is American History. Welcome. I'm your host, Harlan Kearsley. This program's goal is to foster understanding, promote discussion, and expand knowledge through stories of historical events, bios of unsung heroes, as well as timely and relevant news stories which, hopefully, will paint a vivid picture of the effects of segregation, discrimination, and bigotry on the lives of both blacks and whites. Comparisons will be made between the many racially fractured periods of American history and what's going on right now. As the world's population ages, the number of people suffering from dementia is expected to nearly double every 20 years. In 2020, it was 50 million. Did you know that black Americans have significantly higher rates of Alzheimer's than Caucasians? And for more than a century, the reason for it remains unknown. Named after Alois Alzheimer, the psychiatrist credited with publishing the first case of pre-senile dementia, or what will be commonly known as Alzheimer's, the most prevalent form of dementia, has understandably commanded the most attention in the psychiatric community. However, the history of Alzheimer's research tends to leave out one very important person, Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller, a pioneering neurologist psychiatrist, pathologist, and professor. Not only was Dr. Fuller the first black psychiatrist in the United States, but he was the person who, in the very early stages of Alzheimer's research, did the most to reveal the true nature of the disease. This is his story. Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller was born in 1872 in the Liberian capital of Monrovia. His mother, Anna Ursula James, was the daughter of physicians and medical missionaries. His paternal grandparents, John Lewis Fuller and his wife Nancy, had been slaves in Virginia. Upon buying their freedom, John Fuller and his wife moved to the city of Norfolk. The couple then immigrated from there to Liberia in 1852. They set up a colony in West Africa to help establish the nation developed by African Americans and liberated African slaves. Fuller's mother set up a school to teach Solomon and other children in the area. Fuller also studied at the College Preparatory School of Monrovia. Young Solomon had a keen interest in medicine no doubt coming from the fact that his maternal grandparents were medical missionaries in Liberia. In 1889, Fuller moved to the United States and enrolled in Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina. He pursued his medical studies at the Long Island College Hospital in Brooklyn and then at Boston University, where he received his M.D. in 1897. Following an internship in Massachusetts at the Westboro Insane Hospital, later renamed the Westboro State Hospital for obvious reasons, he began working as a pathologist there in 1899. The same year, he joined the faculty of the Boston University School of Medicine as an instructor of pathology. Fuller worked with Dr. Alois Alzheimer the German psychiatrist and neuropathologist credited with publishing the first case of pre-senile dementia. In 1904, Fuller was one of five foreign research assistants selected by Dr. Alzheimer to work in his laboratory at the Royal Psychiatric Hospital in Munich. At this cutting-edge facility, Fuller helped conduct seminal research on physically observable abnormalities in the brains of victims of the disease that in a few years would become known as Alzheimer's. In 1905, Fuller returned to Westboro Hospital, where he resumed his duties as a pathologist with a special focus on Alzheimer's. Since he was fluent in German, he also produced the first English language translation 
of much of Alzheimer's work. This is African American History is American History. Mita Vaughn Warwick was an American artist notable for celebrating Afrocentric themes. At the start of the Harlem Renaissance, Warwick was known for being a poet, painter, theater designer, and sculptor of the Black American experience. Born to a black middle-class family in Philadelphia on June 9, 1877, Mita Baw Warwick attended the Pennsylvania Museum School of Industrial Arts in 1897. In 1899, she left the U.S. to study in Paris, where she met and became the protege of French sculptor Auguste Rodin, famous for his piece, The Thinker. Rodin was so impressed with her work that he pronounced her, quote, a born artist. It was also in Paris that she met American sociologist W.E.B. Du Bois, who became a lifelong friend and confidant. He encouraged Warwick to draw from American and African-American themes in her work. By the turn of the 20th century, she had achieved a reputation as a well-known sculptor in Paris. Warwick has been described as, quote, one of the most imaginative black artists of her generation. She returned to the United States in 1903 and met Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller in 1907. In 1909, they were married. The couple settled in Framingham, Massachusetts, where they were one of the first black families in town. Prominent African-American people visited their house often. Even the Prince of Siam stopped by. Mita Vall Warwick Fuller continued to create works of art against the norms of the day and, unfortunately, the objections of her husband that she should settle down and focus only on being a housewife, especially after she and Solomon had three children. However, Mita Warwick Fuller did not bow to the norms of the day, nor to her husband's expectations of a wife and mother. She continued her art career. Within the community, Warwick Fuller helped establish and was involved in the lighting of productions put on by the Framingham Dramatic Society. She was an active member of the St. Andrew's Episcopal Church, where she directed and costumed their plays and pageants. Art must be the quintessence of meaning. Creative art means that you create yourself. Mita Va Warwick Fuller in a speech given at Livingstone College in 1950. As a pathologist, Solomon Carter Fuller performed numerous autopsies, which enabled him to make observations, none of them more pivotal than the neurofibrillary tangles and the miliary plaques he encountered while examining the brain tissue of deceased people who had dementia. Fuller reported on the significance of neurofibrillary tangles five months before Alois Alzheimer's did. And his discovery identified a physically observable basis for this affliction, which so decimated the memories of its victims. Ultimately, the results of Fuller's research helped to confirm that the condition now known as Alzheimer's was not the result of insanity, but rather a physical disease of the brain. He also went on to publish the first comprehensive review of this disease. As a leading Alzheimer's expert, Fuller was invited to speak at the historic 1909 Clark University Conference in Worcester, Massachusetts, which drew such guests as nuclear physicist Ernest Rutherford and psychoanalytical gurus Carl Jung and Sigmund Freud on his only visit to America. Fuller sought to mitigate racial disparities in mental health care by training young black psychiatrists to treat black veterans of World War I. Yet he couldn't overcome the medical profession's racial inequities in his own life. As a professor at Boston University, he was paid less than his white colleagues. And despite carrying out the duties of the head of the neurology department, 
He never received the title of chair or even a full professorship. He once remarked, With the sort of work that I have done, I might have gone farther and reached a higher plane had it not been for the color of my skin. In 1933, Fuller retired from Boston University after a white junior colleague was promoted over him to become the official head of the neurology department. He continued to practice neurology and psychiatry until diabetes robbed him of his eyesight. Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller died on January 16, 1953, at the age of 80. He died of complications related to diabetes and gastrointestinal cancer. His wife, Mita Vall Warwick Fuller, died on March 18, 1968, at Cardinal Cushing Hospital in Framingham, Massachusetts. Now, to say that Dr. Fuller was not treated well by the medical profession would be an understatement. He received lesser titles and lower salaries than white medical professors with far less experience. Sadly, Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller's contributions to medical science were largely neglected by academia, simply because of the color of his skin. It wouldn't be until 1974 that he finally received posthumous recognition. That year, the Black Psychiatrists of America established the Solomon Carter Fuller Program for Aspiring Black Psychiatrists. Also in 1974, the Solomon Carter Fuller Mental Health Center in Boston was established. The American Psychiatric Association presents its annual Solomon Carter Fuller Award to an individual who has done pioneering work to improve the lives of black people. When you know that you don't know, you've got to read. This has been African American History is American History. The episode you've been listening to, The Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller Story was written and directed by Harlan Kearsley. The voice actors for this episode were Kim Bay as Mita Law Warwick Fuller and Robert McKay as Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller. I'm Harlan Kearsley, and on behalf of everyone here at African American History is American History, thank you for listening. And if you haven't done so, <laughs> please subscribe. As always, it's free, and once you do, You'll be notified as soon as new episodes are posted. Thanks again, and please stay safe. African American History is American History. Copyright H.C. Kearsley, 2022.